So finally HTC will be releasing something that's for the consumer. But what is it? Is it any good? And why does any of this matter? It's HTC that really got me into VR. I remember seeing gameplay of the Vive and thought that's it. I spent 1,300 on a laptop and 800 on a headset. I spent five hours setting everything up with about a thousand cables and a thousand holes, but I was ready and wow, I was amazed. Finally, I could be in the game, move where I want within reason and live out some of my fantasies. 40 hours of Gorn, Beat Saber and Super Hot Later, that was it. It was ready to be listed on Facebook Marketplace. See, while I love the Vive, it wasn't a casual experience by any means. I couldn't just jump on and have an experience or show my friends or even take it outside my room. That's where the Vive Flow seems to solve most of these problems, making a headset designed purely for convenience. What we would do to get an understanding as to the capabilities is to compare with the Quest 2. While some of you might think they shouldn't be compared, most VR users are familiar with the Quest, so to use that as a baseline should provide us with an insight of what the Flow could be. Plus, the price point gives them no excuse not to be compared. First, the resolution. The Flow has a resolution of 1600 by 1600 LCD panels, while the Quest 2 has an LCD panel but with a resolution of 1832 by 1920, so slightly higher. Memory and storage. The Flow has 4GB of RAM and 64GB of storage, while the Quest has 6GB of RAM and up to 256GB of storage, so you can imagine what type of content the Flow will provide. Both the Quest and the Flow have six degrees of freedom, so you can move around in your space essentially. The Flow achieves this with two cameras opposed to the Quest's four, so already I imagine the Quest will provide a better, smoother tracking experience overall. While there has been no issues with the Flow's tracking as it is, but time will tell. Refresh rate. The Flow has a refresh rate of 75 hertz while the Quest can go up to 120 hertz. Now for me, this is a big factor. I think refresh rate is very important to provide a high quality experience. It stops motion sickness and it just makes the whole experience seem a bit more realistic. The processor of the Flow is a Qualcomm XR1 chip, while the Quest has the XR2. So the Quest in terms of performance is another generation essentially. Now the controllers are absent from the Flow as it uses an Android only phone to act as a 3DOF controller. So iOS isn't even supported, which is really disappointing. Now hand tracking is supposedly coming, but you'd think they would have nailed that before the reveal. That would make them a lot more attractive device. Now, in my opinion, where things get interesting and confusing is the overall weight. So the Flow only has a weight of 189 grams. Well, the Quest has a weight of 503 grams, so you can imagine how comfortable the Flow will be. But it doesn't come for free. You have to provide your own external power bank. And while this might be good for some use cases, it makes the very convenient Flow a lot less convenient. Now to end the comparison, we'll take a look at the price. So what we know, the base model of the Quest is 299, which is insane value for money. Based on this price and specs we just talked about, you'd expect the Flow to sit somewhere around 2, 300, maybe even less than that to be honest with you. But it's not. The HTC Vive Flow is $500. So in essence, you're buying a slightly more convenient headset with limited functionality or nearly twice the price. I mean, you have to put some of the blame on Oculus for undercutting the market and probably selling the headset at a loss. Maybe the Flow's price point is a true reflection of how much this technology actually costs. It's a great looking headset and can provide use to the very casual user. But to be honest, the Quest 2 makes the Flow look like a five year old headset. It makes me sad to see what once was the king of VR become confused and unsure of itself. They are experimenting with an unknown demographic when what they need to do is try to provide something superior to the Quest. That's all they need to do. With Valve now making the best high-end headset and Oculus making the best value headset, HTC has little place in this market and it's shown by its products. The flow gives us a small glimpse into what headset can become in terms of aesthetics and weight, but it does little more than that. With that, thanks for watching. If you like the content, please subscribe and like and comment and do all that stuff. Thank you. Bye.